This is the Artisan Colta ES1 Pro, an affordable electric supermoto which I think will make an awesome little commuter. I borrowed it for about a week so here are my final thoughts before I gave it back. Does a budget electric like this make more sense for getting around the city than the more premium offerings from the likes of Zero? I reckon so and I'll tell you why. But before we get started, if you're new here and you'd like to see more motorcycle reviews like this, then please do remember to hit subscribe. I'll quickly run through the specs of this bike before we get on the road. It uses a pair of 72 volt, 26 amp hour Samsung batteries, which are removable so that you can charge them off the bike if, for example, you park it on the street. Alternatively, you can just charge it through the port located under a flap near the bars, and in four and a half hours, you should have a full charge, which is good for about 60 miles. It uses a five kilowatt motor, which is less than you might find in something like the similarly styled Zero FX which puts out 34 kilowatts, but it does mean that the Colter is CBT friendly and 5 kilowatts should be enough for inner city commuting duties. There are three power modes of Sport, Regular and Econ in case you're running low on battery, but otherwise it's pretty simple. There are no other ride arrays to speak of like ABS or traction control. It does have a nice LCD dash though, and the LED headlight with daytime running lights looks good. There's also keyless operation too. The Colter uses a single 210mm disc at the front, which ought to be plenty of stopping power given its slender weight of 112 kilograms. It uses a combined Combined braking system owing to the lack of ABS, which means that the left brake lever operates both the front and rear brakes at the same time. The Coulter is suspended on 37mm upside down forks with rebound damping adjustment and there's an adjustable shock at the rear too. The model I'm riding uses road by a 17 inch cast wheels but there's an off-road kit for a few hundred quid that gives you spoked wheels with a 21 inch front and 18 inch rear on knobbly tyres. So that's the Coulter in a nutshell but how does it ride? The thing that I like right away about this bike is the riding position. When I think back to the CR6, the Horwin CR6 that I borrowed from Artisan as well, that felt like a small bike, but this doesn't. It's much taller, the bars are wider, the foot pegs feel higher as well, and then you've got this long Supermoto style seat, which means you can shuffle around a little bit. It's still very lightweight compared to what I'm used to riding, but it just feels like there's a bit more to it. The ergonomics are more spacious. In terms of the way it delivers its power, the initial acceleration from, you know, from the lights like that is not exactly going to throw you off the back of the bike. It's very gentle and that makes it easy to ride. But once you get up to 15 or so, it's got a strong pull. It feels like it starts to pull a bit stronger anyway, from 15 to about 45 and that's where it starts to die off and then the max speed, 50, 55 or something like that. It's not built for out and out speed, so that's kind of irrelevant. As long as it'll do city speeds, then, uh, then I'm happy. But we're in sport mode, for example, full throttle, and it gently pulls away, and then now it starts to accelerate a bit harder. In that mid-range, it does have some of the satisfaction of the way that a motorcycle accelerates. You know, you can ride this on a CBT and I think in terms of explaining how powerful it feels, a 125 is probably a pretty fair comparison. It's just that the sensation is different because you're not moving through the gears. So it, at first anyway, if you've been on a petrol bike for a while and then you jump on this, it's an unusual feeling the way that it just keeps accelerating and accelerating, like I say, from 15 up to 45. And so that actually makes it super easy to ride. Now, another thing that I've really enjoyed about riding this bike is the brakes. It might help that it's a lightweight bike, but despite it being a single disc at the front, the feel is good, the power is good, as is the way with lots of these budget Chinese made bikes uh, there's no ABS and then by law you have to have combined brakes so the lever on the left here where you don't have a clutch of course because it's um, electric does both the front brake and the rear brake and uh, 
I feel like a broken record now when I ride these kind of bikes, but it is worth pointing out to anyone who's watching this video and thinking about buying one that pulling that left-hand lever means that the front brake's on, the weight shifts forward, the weight's off the rear, and there's no way to modulate between the front and rear brake, so it's quite easy to lock the rear up. On a Supermoto-style bike like this, you might argue that that's a little bit of fun. I've certainly enjoyed a few little slides when I've been riding this bike this week. But then, of course, you have to be cautious in the wet. And also, if you are intentionally sliding the back of this bike, you've got to remember that that lever is also operating the front brake and you want to be careful about locking that one up too. Because that's when you get yourself into trouble. But that's understandable because it's built to a price. And also, I shouldn't let it take away from the fact that the brakes are, like I say, really good. Now, the ride quality is all right as well. The suspension's decent. There's some adjustment. I think it's rebound damping on the front here. I've just middled it. There's 20 clicks. So I've set it to 10. But it's nice to have that ability. If you are riding it off-road, perhaps, I think I'll have mentioned earlier in the video, but there is a 300 quid um, off-road wheel set. So if you do decide to take it off-road, which I think you you know, conceivably could, then yeah, there's some adjustment on the front and on the, on the shock as well. That's a mule. I thought it was a Harley, of course, when it pulled up next to me. But generally, I'd just say it's a fun little bike to ride in the city. A nice, flickable, chuckable um, riding position. Easy to ride off the line because it delivers that power, even in sport mode, progressively and gently, but then builds to having easily enough power when you're riding just solo for accelerating and uh, overtaking and stuff in town. Top speed's enough for keeping up with traffic, even when it gets up to 40. Nice and light, easy to filter on, easy to control. Now, of course, there are a few things I've noticed that I'd probably improve. One of the first things was that the indicator lights here are really dim. They're so dim that you can't even tell whether your indicators are on. The seat is a little thin on padding and therefore firm, which probably goes along with the style of the bike. But given that it's also narrow, I think it depends on the shape of your backside. But some people might find it uncomfortable. Certainly demo one if you can before you buy if you are sensitive to firm seats. I don't mind them, but that's because I used to do a lot of cycling, I think. I've got a hardened posterior. I think generally, mm, you know, it is a plasticky finish. It's built to a price, so don't expect that premium electric motorcycle finish. This is not competing with Harley's Livewire at like 30 grand or whatever it is, and it's, um, still not even competing really with the zeros it's not in that price bracket i think you just have to come into it with realistic expectations of what that kind of money can buy you in terms of build quality and there's something slightly unusual about the handling as well i think i noticed this on the sinis bomber which is an uh 125 kind of cafe racer and as a pure styling exercise i think they put upside down gold forks on it and i felt like for such a small bike the weight of the front end was different that distribution of weight putting these big thick forks on them with a relatively light chassis or the rest of the bike it just took a bit of getting used to to me i guess the steering feels a bit heavier than you'd expect it's not to say it won't steer it handles fine overall but it's just a little bit more steering input required than maybe I'd expect with a bike of this weight and that just takes getting used to so really I'd describe it as more of a handling characteristic than I would a, a floor overall I've really enjoyed riding this bike it definitely ticks more boxes for me than the Horwin I like the more aggressive styling it's getting closer to the vibe of a a zero something like the uh, fx but more importantly the proportions feel right i feel like i'm riding a motorcycle and over the last year or two as i've been riding more and more electrics i've been getting increasingly tempted by them 
and the main thing that's stopping me is the is the price really this wouldn't really do for going further afield and i think if i was going out for a sunday ride where you don't know how many miles you'll be covering and um, maybe you want the engagement of a manual transmission when you're riding on twisties and stuff then yeah i'd still take a i'd still take a petrol bike so an electric would be a you know a, a purchase for getting around town and it's hard to justify even the mid price zeros as a second bike for me anyway i'm not on that uh <laughs> pay grade yet this is getting there though isn't it that three four grand price range and the right level of ability for riding around town it's just proper good fun english electric motor company up in suffolk i went up there to demo some of their zeros and i had an absolute blast especially the srf which is the sports naked bike but it's also nearly 20 grand and i don't know can you really justify that and then riding it at 20 percent throttle everywhere you go in town not really but you could ride this um you know pinned have a really good time and save yourself about 16 grand english electric i believe are going to be stuck in these so if you do want a demo one get in touch with them i wonder if you guys can hear this i love the sound electric bikes sound good like <laughs> i like that whining motor not as good as a motorcycle not as good as a triumph street twin i feel like electric bike manufacturers should uh, lean into it don't pipe a fake sound out through a speaker just try and make that spaceship sound a bit louder as you can tell i really enjoyed my week with the colta es1 pro but i'd love to hear what you think in the comments below would you ever go for a budget electric like this as a second bike and if not what's the main factor drop me a line in the comments and if you're new here and you'd like to see more videos like this hit subscribe and i'll catch you next time